NGOs like to claim that Irish society marginalises transgender activists, but is this actually a reality? This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Hold on now, stall the ball, before we start the video I need your help. If you enjoy Gripped's content at all, make sure to click like, subscribe to the channel and comment on the video. Even if you have absolutely nothing to say, just comment what you had for lunch or something. Because any engagement like that helps to boost the channel and will get these videos seen by more people in their recommended box. And if you're really sound, you'll share it with your friends. Lash it into your uncle's hurling WhatsApp group or send it to your mate on a submarine using Morse code. Do whatever it takes, because you, at the end of the day, are our algorithm. And with that said, on to the video. Of course, one of the classic hallmarks of woke official Ireland is bewailing what an evil, bigoted kip Irish society is without ever demonstrating that this is true or even being asked to provide a shred of evidence for it. Sort of just like an article of faith these days that we're all supposed to accept without question. And as some may have seen last week, the latest example of this came in the form of an open letter published in the Irish Times complaining about how horrible Irish society is to transgender activists. The letter essentially amounts to one long complaint about Joe Duffy's recent RTE Liveline segment in which Joe committed the cardinal sin of allowing a public debate to take place on the issue of transgenderism. Joe, imagine you're a sex abuse uh, victim and you're incarcerated for a small petty crime like shoplifting and you find out that in the cell next to you is a, is a, a sex offender. How do you think you sleep that night having that uh, trauma being brought back to you? Imagine you're a rape survivor and you want to go to a rape crisis clinic and the person who turns up to, to do your uh, counselling is a male who identifies as a woman. How will that feel? They are a Imagine woman. you go in... Um, uh, at least address them by how they identify. You know how okay, disrespectful so, it is so, so to we're not getting, we're getting to the use the right pronouns here. We're, talking the right about a rape, we're talking about a rape victim and the... the, the and the, how do you, the problem and is that we don't, I, we don't we're not calling them the the person who's doing the counselling is uh, by the right gender. We're forgetting completely about the victims here, the real victims. And in fairness now, you would understand the outrage in response to this. I mean, God forbid the public should be allowed to discuss issues of vital national importance, like whether gender ideology has gone too far in areas like women's sports, or letting biological males into women's changing rooms, or whatever. Wait a minute, you're worried about your little girl having to share a bathroom with biological males? What are you, some kind of Nazi skinhead? I mean, obviously it goes without saying that honest conversations on such matters are strictly forbidden. Living in a tolerant society obviously means that anyone who has valid concerns about this needs to shut up. You got that, Adolf? The letter was co-signed by all the usual suspects in the NGO sector, Tenny, LGBT Ireland, the Irish Council of Civil Liberties, the National Women's Council, Dublin Pride, Irish Network Against Racism, Amnesty International, etc, etc. You know the drill at this stage. And the main crux of the whole complaint seems to hinge on one sentence in the first paragraph where it's claimed that the trans activists in Ireland have been quote marginalized, denied access to healthcare and their voices are heard rarely in the national discourse. But is this actually true? I mean let's rewind for a second and look at the reality of the situation. It's undeniable that the trans lobby has huge influence over virtually every powerful mainstream in institution in modern society. Every single political party in official Ireland has a section in their manifesto about catering to radical gender issues. Case in point, let's hear from Michal Martin about how he wants children under the age of 16 to be able to change their gender under Irish law. Take it away Michal. This bill, which would amend the Gender Recognition Bill of, uh, Act of 2015, to provide a right to self-determination for persons who reach the age of 16 years, to introduce the right to legal gender recognition for persons under the age of 16, for persons under the age of 16, for persons under the age of 16. So I guess if a child is 14 or 12 or even 10, all of those are perfectly acceptable ages to change your gender in Ireland under law. I mean, what if you were even 5 or 4 or 1? He didn't mention a lower limit if he believes in one. And note that towards the end he mentions non-binary recognition under Irish law and to ensure consideration of the status of non-binary persons in Irish law. Now, some of you are probably wondering what non-binary means. Maybe you haven't come across that term before. So let's consult with dictionary.com and find out together, shall we? Come on, let's take a trip down the gender wormhole. What does non-binary mean? Non-binary people have a gender identity that does not fit into the male and female binary. 
Like transgender, non-binary is also used as a general term, but there are many ways to identify outside the binary. There are those whose gender identity isn't fixed, such as gender fluid people, experience a variety of masculine, feminine or androgynous identities, such as pangender people, do not identify with any gender, such as agender people, and more. So non-binary basically means someone who identifies as neither male nor female. They identify as some unspecified third gender entirely. And to be clear, Miho Martin, the T-shock of our country, apparently believes in this and wants to recognize it under law. And that includes the whole gender fluid thing where on Monday you're a man and then on Tuesday you're a woman and you flip back and forth between them depending on the day or even the hour or minute. He, I guess, thinks that I could start this video as Ben and then finish it as Brenda. Martin apparently believes in this and he takes it very seriously as does Leo Varadkar and Labour and the Greens and people before profit and the Social Democrats and all the others. In fact, here is Sinn Féin telling us that we need to make sure abortion rights are available for men as well as women. Now that's a real cause worth fighting for. We must ensure that abortion services are available in Ireland. I think it's important that we ensure, ensure that every woman, and I want to include in these this trans persons, those who identify as non-binary, so in summation, while you're stressing about the housing crisis, inflation and energy costs, the people running our country are worried about letting children change their gender and making sure your dad can get an abortion in his uterus. Welcome to modern Ireland, please enjoy your stay. Not only that, but INTO, the Irish Teachers Union, has a whole subgroup dedicated to advocating on behalf of transgender teachers and advises that teachers refer to children by whatever gender they identify as. At a parent-teacher meeting, a mother told me that her child, who we called Lucy, identified as a boy and wished to be called Liam. After this, I set about preparing the class for Liam's social transition. I taught lessons investigating and challenging gender stereotypes, and using the book Introducing Teddy, explained that some people don't identify with the gender they're assigned at birth. I said, Tilly wasn't happy because everyone saw her as a boy, but she knew she was really a girl. My pupil Ray asked, so boys can change into girls? And then Julie chimed in, and girls can change into boys? Yes, I said. Sometimes, while the doctor says a baby is a boy, as that baby grows up, they feel inside that they're not a boy. By the way, in case you think that's some brand new development, that clip is two years old and nobody noticed it at the time when it first came out. So for years already, Irish schools have been teaching that one can change their gender to primary school students as a policy. As I reported exclusively on GRIP just last year, we have schools in Meath holding competitions for which class can wear the best transgender colours for no uniform day. So in other words, for no uniform day, they just had to wear a different kind of uniform. Colours they ask children to wear include agender, aromantic, asexual, bisexual, demisexual, gender fluid, gender queer, intersex, lesbian, pansexual, polysexual, progress, non-binary, traditional and transgender identities. Traditional being just a regular pride flag. That's apparently a vanilla and basic traditional identity now. And notably the progress flag includes brown and black bars symbolizing solidarity with people of color and it's usually associated with Black Lives Matter. And notice how many times I said the word sexual just there in that list. Bisexual, demisexual, pansexual, etc. Just non-stop talk about sex, 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 how you want to have sex, who you want to have sex with, how many people you want to have sex with, how sex makes you feel, what gets you aroused. And our children are apparently supposed to wear clothes symbolizing this at school. Forget the Irish language, forget history and maths and all that useless rubbish. Real learning, it turns out, means wearing the colors of a polysexual, aromantic, progressive, genderqueer sexual identity. Now, that's what I call a classical education if I've ever seen one. I mean, this would even be inappropriate if you did it for straight sexual preferences. Imagine a school saying, this week we're going to celebrate guys who like well-endowed brunettes, and next week is curvy redhead appreciation week. That'd be pretty weird, wouldn't it? I mean, why are we talking about what people like sexually at school? 
heterosexuality, homosexuality, bisexuality. It's all sexuality. Can we not just take it down a notch? I mean, Janie Mack. The HSC website refers to women and people with a cervix on its website, implying that males can have cervixes as well. Now listen, you sitting there watching this video, do you actually believe that males can have cervixes? And be honest now, this is off the record. It's just between you and me, okay? We're friends. Now imagine your uncle came into you right now and told you that he wanted to get a cervical checkup. Would you take that seriously? Because the HSC apparently does. The Irish College of GPs worked with Tenney earlier this year to publish a report which initially claimed that transgender puberty blockers are reversible. But after questioning from Grips Gary Kavanagh, they later quietly removed this claim. Make of that whatever you will. The Gardaí paint their cruisers rainbow colored for Pride Month, and the Defence Forces wear rainbow sashes around their necks to support LGBT pride. The transgender lobby has the ear of the President, the Government, the Opposition, the EU, the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, the mainstream media, the 6 billion euro a year NGO sector, the education system, academia, the health service and medical profession more broadly, most big corporations, celebrities, the arts, the police, the military and pretty much every other powerful institution institution. We have rainbow crossings up and down the length of the country and for an entire month of the year we carpet bomb the country in pride flags which include the transgender colours. It used to be pride day, then it was pride week and now it's progressed to pride month. And soon enough we'll probably have a new Chinese style zodiac calendar with year of the pansexual and special lunar feast days for people who identify as cats or something. In light of all of this one has to ask where is the marginalization exactly? Do you see it? Because I certainly don't. RTE allowed a perfectly reasonable debate on certain trans issues on their airwaves once and they've since been metaphorically hanged, drawn and quartered in the court of public opinion. They were almost dragged before an inquisition trial, aka an Oireachtas committee meeting, to be grilled as to why they would dare to allow someone to question gender ideology for even a single second. Does that sound like a downtrodden group with no power to you? It should have been a clue that Ireland maybe wasn't a country that marginalizes trans people when the Gender Recognition Act, which is having huge implications for our society today, quietly passed into law back in 2015 with barely a debate or fuss. Most people probably don't even remember it happening. This is the same law that has led to multiple biologically male transgender prisoners with violent tendencies being put into women's prisons because they identify as female. It's an extremely radical piece of legislation, but it went through with almost no serious discussion or pushback because we are tolerant of gender ideology to a fault in this country. It's simply amazing that these claims of Ireland's intolerance go completely unscrutinized by anyone in the larger newspapers and how nobody will point out what a load of tripe it so obviously is. Please like and share this video and if you enjoyed it please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.